What is up guys? Today we are back with another video and we're going to be talking about every class that I took my first semester at Georgia Tech. A few months ago I made another video where I talked about every computer science class that I've taken at Georgia Tech and I decided that I wanted to make another video but this one oriented more so towards all the freshmen who are going to be starting this fall. I'm going to try to keep this video short but if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments and with that let's get started with my first class to freshman year which is CS 1301. So the first class we're going to talk about is CS1301, also known as Intro to Computing. So this is a three credit class, and when I took this, it was three days a week. It was Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9.05 a.m. to 9.55 a.m. Back then, I had the class in Klaus, but it's important to note that all these classes will change buildings and rooms every semester, so if you end up taking CS1301, don't expect to be in Klaus. Moving on to grades, and if you're anything like I was freshman year, you're probably pretty curious about grades at Georgia Tech. So the average GPA for that class when I was a freshman was a 3.18. And if you're curious about the grading distributions, I have that right here. Important to note though, Georgia Tech uses a grading scheme of A's, B's, and C's. We do not have any pluses and minuses. So for CS1301, 39.4% of students got an A, 31.8% of students got a B, 11.5% of students got a C, and 12.4% of students got a W. Also, if you're not familiar with what a W is, W stands for withdrawal. So we have a withdrawal deadline at Georgia Tech, also known as the drop date. And basically, if you don't think you're doing well in the class, you can withdraw and it won't affect your GPA. However, it will show up on your transcript as a W. So keep that in mind if you're gonna drop a class. Just to give an overview of the class, it's an introduction to Python and of computer science in general. So they don't really expect you to have any coding knowledge coming in. Although if you have it, it will make it easier for you. For me, I think it was a good class. I didn't have Python experience, so it was useful. But if you're someone who already knows a lot of Python or a lot of computer science, it might be a good idea for you to try to test out of this class and move on to CS1331. All right, moving on to my second class and my only other computer science class I had this semester, which is CS1100. And I had this only on Tuesdays from 9.30 to 10.20. This course is known as the Freshman Leap Seminar and when I had it, it was in the Colk. But essentially, this isn't really considered a challenging or technical computer science class at all. It is really just meant to be an introduction to college, but with a computer science spin on it. CS1100 is only a one credit class and it's pass fail, and 99.6% of students passed the class when I took it, so you don't need to be too concerned about CS1100 should you need to take it. Like I said before, this is a totally non-technical class. There was zero coding in this class. I remember some of the assignments we had to do were like making our first resume or making a schedule for ourselves just to manage our time better. It's really just an introduction to college, but it's technically a computer science course. All right, we're all done with computer science classes now, so we're gonna transition into some other types of classes. And there's no better way to start this than with one of my favorite classes that I've taken at Georgia Tech, which is French 1001. This is also known as Elementary French 1. It's three credits. I had it on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 155 to 245 in the Engineering Sciences and Mechanics building. This is all the way on East Campus, and I've never had any other classes in here, but for some reason they decided they had space there and they stuck us in there for French. Back when I took this class, the GPA was a healthy 3.55, and for the grade distribution, 57.1% of students got an A, which is really good, 27.1% of students got a B, 1.4% of students got a C, and only 2.9% of students withdrew from the class. In terms of the actual class, it doesn't expect you to know any French when you come in. In my personal experience, I only took Spanish in high school, and I know some other people in the class were the same way, but you do need to be willing to learn and move quickly in the class. If you need to take a language class at Georgia Tech, I would highly recommend French, and if you can, try to take it with Professor C. He was an amazing professor and one of my favorites that I've had at Georgia Tech. All right, so moving right along, it's time to talk about the fourth class of my freshman year, which was English 1101. This was a three credit class, but I only had it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and as a result, I had it for a little bit longer, from 1.30 to 2.45. When I took the class, the name of it was Making the List, Bestsellers, Best Of, and Banned Books. Important to note with these English classes is that they all have a different theme. So that was the theme of my English class, but more likely than not, with a different professor and a different semester, you will probably have a different theme for your English class. Back when I took the class, the average GPA was a 3.59 for that professor, so that's pretty good. And if we want to look at the grade distribution, 65.7% of students got an A, 25.7% of students got a B, 4.3% of students got a C, and only 2.9% of students withdrew from the class. Just to give you an overview of what you might be able to expect in that class, the main component is something called woven, which stands for written, oral, visual, electronic, and nonverbal forms of communication. Basically, you'll do a bunch of projects, often in groups, 
that exercise different forms of communication and you'll have to talk about how you're using these forms of communication to effectively communicate with your audience. At the end of the class, there's a final portfolio, which is basically an essay where you talk about the different things that you did in the semester, how you grew, etc. Also, regardless of which English class you're taking and what theme it has, you'll have to do something called the Common First Week video, which is basically you introducing yourself, talking about your interests and what you're looking forward to in the class. All right, so the last class that I took freshman year in my first semester is Math 1552, also known as Integral Calculus. This was a four credit class with two days of lecture and two days of recitation. I had my recitation from 10.10 till 11 on Mondays and Wednesdays in Skiles, and I had my lecture on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1.15 in Howie. Just thinking back to freshman year, I know this is a class that a lot of people struggled with, and it was definitely harder than a lot of the other classes that I was taking. The GPA kind of confirms this. It was only a 3.13 that semester for my class. And if we want to look at the grading breakdown, 47.2% of students got an A, which is actually a pretty healthy amount. 18.9% of students got a B, 11.3% of students got a C, and noteworthy, 12.3% of students withdrew from the class. Just to talk a little bit about the class, this is the successor to Math 1551, which is Differential Calculus. I already had credit for that when I came into college, so I was able to start in 1552, but if you don't have credit, you'll start in 1551. If you remember back to high school, you probably had something called Calculus AB and Calculus BC. Differential Calculus, or 1551, is similar to Calculus AB, and this class, which is Integral 1552, is similar to Calculus BC. Fortunately, I didn't struggle too much in that class, but I largely attribute this to the fact that I had a great recitation teacher. Important to note, even if you don't have an amazing lecturer, which I think mine was actually pretty good, but some people didn't like him, if you have a really good recitation teacher, that can definitely make up for some of the deficiencies of your lecturer. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you enjoyed it, as always, hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for new content every week. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.